Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and I'm back again with Karen Charles, who is an event specialist with Husqvarna Viking. Welcome, Karen. Oh, thank you for having me. Today we're going to be talking about some quilt as you go techniques, correct? Right. And, and what we can do, what, what tools are out there to help us accomplish that. Absolutely. There, there's a lot of simple ways of quilting as you go today. And they've been around, but somehow they've changed and morphed. Some of them seem very complicated. I'm going to show you something that's really simple and fast. Okay. And to start with, I have a quilt block here. It could be any size. It really doesn't matter. But I've quilted it. And now I've decided that I'm going to make it bigger. Okay. And so instead of feeling like you have to cre create a whole quilt top all at once, you can do a quilt in pieces and quilt as you go. And the only thing that you're going to worry about is quilting the outside edge that you add on. So for a lot of people who don't have a long arm, don't have a mid arm, some, a very large machine where they can be quilting, sometimes the idea of quilting a queen size quilt or a king size quilt yeah. is a little bit intimidating. Yeah, it seems, it, it seems out of bounds or out of reach or too difficult, yeah. especially if you've got a narrow throat space on your machine. Right. Well, this method, you can do any size quilt you want and quilt very easily. So to start with, we're going to think about what we're adding for our border. We're going to be adding the first two pieces of green fabric and we're gonna put them on the sides. And this is what I've decided is my next piece of fabric that I'm gonna add on. And I'm gonna use the same piece at the bottom, the next two pieces. So this is the border that I would normally be putting on. And if I was doing this in the traditional method, I would have sewed the block and added my pieces yeah. on and kept going and having that whole big top. Mm -hmm. Instead, we're gonna choose a little different method and I'm going to walk you through it really simply. We're going to take these away from now. And we're going to be using a walking foot on our machine. If you haven't had a lot of experience with walking foot, this is the one that we're using right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is what it looks like. I'll move it over so you can see. This one is a little bit different from normal. A walking foot is called a walking foot or a dual feed foot because there are feed teeth that are on the bottom. And it helps to feed the top layer and the bottom layer and the middle layer all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So um, a traditional walking foot uh, would have one foot to it. This one's called interchangeable because the bottom feet come off uh -huh. and you can use different feet for it. So we have an open toe one that we can use. Just luck that I pulled out the right one. Mm -hmm. And we have another one that's got a bar in the middle. We're gonna use this one. On our machine right now, we have one that's got a bar for the quarter of an inch. So we can do our perfect quarter of an inch. And because we're working with all the layers, it's gonna be simpler. Some machines do have a built-in walking foot, mm -hmm. but they don't have the advantage of being able to use some of these different feet. So right. it's kind of neat to be able to choose it according to the purpose that you're going to be sewing. So we're going to put these aside right now. And we're going to take our top fabric and we're going to lay it down just like normal. You'll notice it's a little bit longer than the quilt block that I'm working on. And that's intentional. And that's intentional. Okay. And we're going to add our piece to the back. So this is and your backing This your is backing the back fabric. fabric. We're going to put the right sides together. You'll notice there's the back of my quilt. Now, if you wanted it to look like it was quilted in a very traditional way and was all one piece, you would use the exact same fabric all the way through. Mm -hmm. But I've decided to be a little more adventuresome. So we're going to lay another fabric down. And when we start, we're going to line them up so that they're all together. And we're just going to put one pin in place and go to our machine. Okay. And we should have a little bit of fabric left down at the other end. If we felt like we were a little bit shy, then we could adjust it and take a little bit less up Okay, there. but you want, I don't know, it looks like maybe a quarter of an inch, yeah, a little more. It can be as big as you beyond. want. There's, it really doesn't matter too much. Better to have too much left over than too little. And as we go, we're going to square it up. So okay. that's all that really matters in the end. If you have a little bit extra fabric, it's a lot better than having too little. Great. So. Right now, all we're doing is sewing the back and the front on. We have a, the walking foot on that's got the needle in the center, so we have to make sure that we have the stitch with safety set on our machine okay. so we don't accidentally break a needle if we go to another stitch. Uh -huh. Always a good idea. Yes. 
And so we're just going to stitch this down like it was a regular quilt. We're going to let the bar line up against with the edge of the fabric. If we need to reset everything, we can either pin it, mm -hmm. or I usually don't usually use too many pins. So I just kind of let it, the machine do the work, mm -hmm. let it go through nice and easily. And then if I need to stop and pick it up, I can always lift it up and get it to line up properly. And we're almost there at the end. I also usually leave a stitch length. I like a stitch length of 2.0 because it's nice and firm. It's not going to come out. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to take this off and you can look at what we have. We have the back fabric and we have the front fabric. Mm -hmm. We just don't have the batting. Right. So that's the next step. We're going to take the, and I don't cut anything until we've got this part done. Ah. We're going to take the foot that's on off because that is just for doing our piecing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put on one that looks a little bit different. It's got a bar in the middle. Let's turn that on the side so okay. maybe people can see it or over. See the bar in the middle? So it's going to allow us to lay our batting on one side and it's going to come down the middle to keep it from weaving back and forth. This is a big weakness in a lot of the ways that you would attach something like this. If you just use an open toe foot, mm -hmm. you tend to weave on and off of it, and it doesn't give you that regular consistent seam, just like you would when you were getting your other seam to the first part of it. Okay. So we're going to come over, and we're just going to snip that one right into place. There we go. Have our thread underneath, and we're going to change our stitch. We're going to go from a straight stitch to a bridging stitch. Ah. And the way it's going to work is it's going to come straight down mm -hmm. and then over and take a bite into this one and then come down again and take a bite over into the batting. So you're going to have a very light, strong, strong stitch, mm -hmm. but it is going to be so flat that you'll never know there was a seam there. Uh -huh. It's also the same type of stitch. If you've ever had batting that wasn't big enough, and you felt like, oh, if only I could just add a piece onto this. Yeah. This is the perfect technique for adding batting because it's so flat that you don't see anything. So we're going to lay it in the same way. Now this time we've got a bar in the middle. So we're going to line up this fabric on the left and we're going to line up the batting on the right. And if it's not exactly where you want, you can just kind of lift up your fabric and move it along. Remember, the bar is going to keep the fabric on one side or the other. And so when we start, I'm going to start at the very beginning back here. And it's pretty easy sewing because all I'm looking at, I'm not looking at the needle. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at where the bar is lining up right in the center there. The other thing that I usually do is I set my machine so the needle's going to stop down. Because when I stop, now the, fa the needle's in the fabric, it's not going to go anywhere. I'm just going to sew to the end. And you can see I'm not having any effort to guide it into right. place. They're both pieces are just lining up against the metal. But when I'm done, there won't be any gap. Almost to the end. And we're done. Lift our foot up. We could have used the automatic cutter. And this is at the point where you go and you lay this back and you press it in place. You do the same thing for this side. Mm -hmm. There's our back. And you're going to notice that the batting is a little bit bigger. I like to do that. I cut the batting and my fabric the same size. Okay. Then I press it, get it so it's nice and flat, and that's when I square it up. So I have my ruler and my rotary cutter, and I would come in, where'd that ruler go to? It's right. your ruler? Thank you. Yeah. We only have a small little one. And then I'm going to come up. I'm going to use the straight lines in my ruler, and I'm going to cut away my piece. See how nice that is? Mm-hmm. And so you trim now before you've quilted I trim this now. extra part. I like to trim now um, if I think that I'm going to keep working with it. 
But you're right. If I was going to quilt, then I would wait and trim it afterwards. I see. Okay. But if and but this is where a good place to start and talk. Right now, I have this big open area. Mm -hmm. I can put all the next layer of borders on, then go in and do all my quilting. Before I can sew this piece on here, this has to be trimmed. Of course. So if I was going to go in and do a delicate pattern in here, you know, do free motion, whatever it was I was going to do, I can come over to my machine, do the type of quilting I mm -hmm. want, and then add the next piece. In that case, I can leave the trimming to later. Got it. But in, in our case right now, what we're going to be doing is we would go, we're going to take our next piece that belongs over here. And this one's going to go underneath, right? And then that one's going to come on. And we'll sew it like this. We'll add the batting in the same way. We'll open them up, and that one will be done. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to go to the next part of the process. So before we can do this next part, this we has to be trimmed. And then we're going to add this down here in exactly the same way. And we'll have a piece up here. Mm -hmm. Now let's look what's happening at the back. If this is our back, and we've got our piece here, we might use the same fabric on this side, but maybe we want to change it up. We could have it so that it has the exact same color blue mm -hmm. on the back here. Or if we wanted to be adventuresome, we could use a different fabric and it would be a courtyard steps so and we could keep building that oh, yeah. way yeah, and yeah. create a completely different we quilt block. have a two-sided quilt. It would be double-sided. That's great. And so as you make choices about your fabrics, you can change the way the whole quilt's going to turn mm -hmm. out. We could go from it being just a simple one-sided quilt to having it being double-sided. Beautiful. These pieces can be as big as you want to, but when it comes down to the process, the only thing that matters is you're going to quilt this outside piece, then you're going to go add more, mm -hmm. and it just keeps building until it's, you get it as big as you want to. So let's, let's talk about a type of quilt yes. that might work well for this. This is a quilt that I did. And when you look at the way that it's built, we have our center square. These triangles could be added in the same way. I would make them a little bit bigger, maybe a quarter inch, half inch bigger. I would lay the purple fabric here and the, fa the back fabric. Mm -hmm. I would lay it the same way, sew them in, in place, add the batting, then flip it, press it, and keep building on it. Afterwards, this border can be added. And then if you keep looking, you can see how these simple pieces could go. Mm -hmm. I could, if I wanted to, sew this border to this one, add them both at the same time. But I'm only quilting what's on that outside edge. So right, the Sapphire 960Q has 10 inches between the needle and the side of the tower of the machine. A lot of machines have less room than right. that. So depending upon how much room you have, it makes things a little harder to work right. with. Right, and let's take a look really quick. For instance, in here, um, in this, um, embroidered border, you have some, some very small like, meander. This, the, it's funny because this fabric right. had a little pattern right. to it. So I'm not very good at the very high, you know, designs that are really created and they've got a lot of feathers with them. Right. That's not my specialty. You'll notice that most of my quilting that I do, it, I tend to try and make it blend into the quilt because I mm -hmm. want the fabrics to speak. Mm -hmm. And so this had a little, um, you know, design in it. So all I did was follow that design. And I also came around the embroidery, so I stayed really close to it. But it would be hard to really, sometimes to maneuver the quilt yep. with that much weight hanging off the other side. Absolutely. So this is a really great technique yep. in order to get that kind of control that sometimes is, is lacking um, when we're sitting down to machine quilt at a domestic machine. And it stops sometimes the thought of doing a large quilt. People really feel intimidated and they've got to send it out. My, right. well, the way I look at it is I like to be able to go from the very beginning to the very end of a process. If I'm going to be saying that this is my quilt, I want to feel it's my quilt from the beginning to the end. Well, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for showing us these techniques. We hope that this gave you something to work with in your next quilt. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the quilters community, is brought to you by Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.